Okay, Wen, you ready? Come on, let's start. It's training time for Beth Pratt and her dog, Windigo. Push this. Press it. That's a good girl. But this dog isn't learning to sit and roll over. One more, Wen. Press it. Yes, good girl. My name is Beth Pratt, and this is my service dog, Windigo. She's four years old, and I got her when she was eight weeks old. So I never intended for her to be a service dog. She was just going to be another one of my pets. But plans changed, as they so often do, because of health. Well, I have a disability, so it's a neurological disability. I have trouble with um, strength in my hands, and I have trouble with stability, so balance, balance issues. And it's progressive, so it continually gets worse. So Pratt decided to get a service animal, in her case, a mobility dog. It would help her balance when walking, pick up her dropped cell phone, purse, or pill bottle. It could help preserve her independence. Yes, good girl. Several organizations in Canada provide service animals for people with disabilities or mental health issues, but when Pratt applied, her plan was brought to heel. I sent in the form, um, but then I got a letter back saying that they weren't taking applications and that the waiting list was five years. So now they have such a backlog that they won't take applications, so who knows how long that's going to be for. Please. Like so many things, that backlog is largely due to the pandemic. But there's also an increased demand for service dogs, as the list of services they can provide keeps getting longer. The dogs can do so many things. There's seizure alert dogs. There's dogs for um, people with diabetes that can sometimes detect blood sugar lows. They do autism dogs, which are very popular. Hearing loss, mental health issues. I mean, there's just so many opportunities uh, that people can gain from having a service dog. If you can afford it, you can skip the waiting lists and buy a trained service dog. When Pratt priced them, she was quoted between twenty dollars and $30,000. Hold it. But there's another way. Well, there's a thing called owner-trained service dogs. So it's perfectly legal, and you can train your own dog to be your service dog. Can you touch? There's no licensing body, no certification required. All you need is a note from your doctor. The vest you can buy on Amazon. But to get a service dog to do the services takes a ton of training and the right temperament for the dog and the owner. And then you look online and you look in books and you see what other people do. And I've joined a couple of Facebook groups with people who have service dogs and you can ask questions and see what other people have done, what has worked for them. And you just work every single day at it. Hi, guys. Hi, Natasha. How are you? Good. How Good. Are you? It's nice to see you again. Good to see you, too. Yeah. There are so many people in Pratt's position that a new business has sprung up to service them. Natasha Pinsent is a longtime dog trainer who now trains people. My business is about helping people train their own dogs to be service dogs. Back in the day, they were training for specific things like blindness, uh, even for veterans, for PTSD. But now more and more, there's so many people suffering that the waiting lists are so long uh, just to get somebody to train your dog for you and then give it to you that so many people feel uh, lost and without hope because it could be years before they even get on a list to talk to somebody about what they need. Pratt and Windigo are taking classes with Pinsent, but Pinsent says most people who call her don't actually need a service dog. They need a therapy dog or emotional support animal. Which the difference is therapy dogs are kind of like if I'm stressed, I'll touch the dog and the dog will bring me comfort or I bring it to a place and it brings other people comfort. A service dog has to perform a task specific to the person. Uh, so that's what makes a service dog different. For people who rely on service animals, they're a lifeline that keeps other important parts of life within reach. Uh, we're at the YMCA, and we are about to go to a cycle fit spin class. I mean, she helps me keep my balance until I get to the spin class. She also helps me when I'm in the change room, because I can uh, brace myself against her when I'm standing up or when I'm taking off my coat. But she's really good. She usually stays in place, rests and relaxes and watches what's going on. 
When people see Pratt with Windigo at the gym or the mall, she hopes they respect her privacy and their space. But she's also happy to answer questions and help normalize service animals in public. I find that I know people a little bit better because people come and they ask me about her and we get to talking and then everyone seems to know my name and who I am because of my dog. <laughs> She also wants to help normalize the do-it-yourself path that she and Windigo have taken. It's not for everyone or every dog, but Pratt says it can lead to a better life. If you feel like you want to put the time and effort into it and you feel you have the capability, you know, and you have the right dog, then go for it. Zach Gowdy, CBC News, St. John's.